Hi, Janelle and Gregory Watson here, helping you with your vibrational energy mastery. Hope you enjoy the video. If you like what you see, hit like and feel free to subscribe to our channel. It's your energy, your way. Master your energy today. Yeah. So, oh. morning, Patty. Good morning. Good evening. Good evening to you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Good morning to us over here in uh, down under. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, today, guys, I wanted to introduce you to my good friend, Patty Schmuck. And Patty is an amazing life coach who is a self confidence coach for people who experience grief. Grief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, me. Patty, did you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, you did such a lovely job. My name is Patty Schmuck, and I am a self-confidence coach for people who have experienced grief. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fun thing about grief is it's not necessarily someone not necessarily losing a loved one. Grief comes in a lot of flavors. Um, it could be the end of a relationship. It could be a divorce. It could be any life transition when we go mm -hmm. through a grieving process, which is kind of just trying to figure out who we are after we've healed from the initial shock, the initial loss. And we find ourselves in this position, we're just trying to figure out who we are in life. And that was, that was my personal journey as well. So that is, uh, that's how I got to where I am now. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about um, what you wanted to chat about today. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Uh, do you want me to tell me tell you a little bit, just a little bit about my story? Do you think you're that would be would good? Like yeah, that? why we're doing this chat as much as anything yes. else and your story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing this chat because this is self confidence and grief may sound like something that doesn't fit, but the truth is, self confidence is what gets you out of your comfort zone to move forward. And when you are in a grief situation and you've gone through a life transition and you're trying to figure out who you are. Staying in that comfort zone feels really good on one side, but on the other side, you're not moving forward. You're not getting into that life you want to get into. And it really takes the confidence to be able to step out and, and get into that discomfort. I like to say to go from the ick to the better. And you've got to step into that, that. ick in order to, to get to the better side as much as there is, there's some resistance to not wanting to do that. And this again was my journey. Um, I lost my son, Aaron in 2012 at the age of mm -hmm. 20, um, he did die by suicide. So when you go into a grieving situation, anything you bring into grief, any mental or emotional baggage that you have just from simply being a human being, when you bring that into grief, it really gets amplified. And the one thing that was really amplified, one of many things that was really amplified for me was the lack of self-confidence. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I had a little chat with him yesterday, actually, I have a beautiful painting that my sister created for me from a photo that one of his friends uh, took when he was in high school. And That's I have beautiful. it on my wall. It is beautiful. And I sit and I chat with him. And awesome. last night, you know, or yesterday morning, I was I've having this chat with him about self confidence. And just, you know, I said to him, kiddo, I couldn't model good self confidence for you. And I couldn't help instill that in you, because I didn't have it in me. And it's really been my journey to, to build that so that I can help folks with their own. And that's just super important to me. It is the legacy that I'm going forward for, going forward with for Aaron. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yes. Well, Aaron um, is, is supporting you in doing this as part of your journey, isn't he? He is. Which is Definitely. pretty amazing. He's a very amazing soul. Yeah. Yes, you've Beautiful. had some interactions with him. We have on the soul level, yes, yes, and the spirit level. Um, uh, for those of you who know, we, you know, we're a spiritual business, uh, such energy business. Really, it's all about energy, connection of energy. And we met uh, my husband Gregory and I met the lovely Aaron on the other side, and he's gorgeous, and he loves yes. his mum very much. Yeah. And he's there yeah. to support her in everything she does. So, yeah, that's that's pretty amazing. And uh, I love what you're doing with your journey. I love the way you're actually 
evolving with this whole process. Yeah. You know, I can yeah. see you evolving with it all and you can actually come to terms and come to grips with what's going on for others so much more easily than people who haven't experienced, you know, what you've been through. Right. Right. And you've been a witness to that. You and I have known each other for a little over a year now. Yeah. We met in a mentoring group and, and really connected and have had a lot of good chats uh, over the past year. So you have you have seen me on my journey for sure. Uh, yeah. yeah. And it's been fantastic to watch. So yeah. with all of this, so if when you're helping people uh, to yeah. actually, you know, achieve their self-confidence that they need, mm -hmm. a lot of people would probably sit and say, well, why would I need self-confidence? I'm grieving. Mm hmm yeah, absolutely. Because we don't necessarily live in the deepest parts of grief forever. In the beginning, it's exactly how it feels. You feel completely disconnected from yourself, from the world. Nobody's grief is more important than yours. And, and it's a very isolating and dark place to be in many ways. Mm -hmm. um, but there's happiness and there's light there too. Sometimes I kind of equate it to a jungle. You know, you, you go in the darkest places, but as you go through your journey, there are beautiful vistas and there's, there's beauty there as well as you start to find meaning. Um, but in order to really step out and find out what you want that next place to be, you really have to have the self-confidence to do that. But that's the same in anything in life. It's not, not just for grief. You know what I mean? So grief is just another part of life. I say it's universal. We all experience it each in our own way. But if we're going to find meaning and purpose, you got to have the guts to step out of that comfort zone. You got to have that self-confidence to do that. You've got to believe that you can. You've got to believe ahead of time. And so for me, it's there's kind of five steps to building self-confidence. And that first one really is believing ahead of time that you're going to, because it's very easy to stay in the, the comfort zone really looks like that. I'll never move forward. I'll never feel better. I can't mm -hmm. do this. You know, I can't be happy. Um, and again, that evolves through acceptance and it's a whole process. Anybody so that's they're beating themselves up about it as well, aren't they? Going, you know, like yes. there's also the guilt and I shouldn't. And But yes. with that first step, I'll never. I mean, they're constantly reaffirming that with themselves as well. So constantly saying, I'll never feel better. I'll never feel happy again. That's just, you know, building that up constantly. So they're not even looking at themselves. They're looking at the grief as being more important than themselves. Right. That's a great way to put that. I love that. Yes, that's exactly true. That's exactly it. The grief is more important than themselves and what they want and very attached. Uh, if it is a loved one, very attached to that loved one. If it's a divorce or a, a job loss, very attached to that, um, that thing that you lost and thinking that your life has no meaning without that thing, that person that you lost, hmm. but that's not true. You can definitely find meaning if you choose to do so. Um, but you've got to believe ahead of time that you can. Uh, we tend to, as humans say, you know, show me and I'll believe it. Seeing is not believing, believing is seeing. There we go. That's what I try to say. So yeah. if you believe ahead of time, you will see and you will start to create what you want. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And that's, yeah. that's really important. And that must be difficult for you to work with somebody to get them. Like, I guess once they've got that first step that's really is that the most important step of them all or just the hardest I think it's the hardest it's the hardest because you just can't see where you are you just can't see there's a future and I think that's the same for anything if you're creating a business or you're doing something for the first time you can't see that there's more out there for you you're looking at evidence from the past your brain wants to look at evidence from the past as opposed to creating a vision for the future. And that's mm -hmm. really difficult to do. Um, but it's also where we start to pull in some um, positive personal affirmations. We're really looking at those limiting beliefs, those I nevers, I can't, I shouldn't, I won't. And we're reframing them to a more positive bent, if you will. Or perspective, to, start to, to change their perspective. Yes, exactly. So it's flip that thought. switch and change the perspective from being negative to, you know, a more positive preview, I guess. 
Exactly. And we never want to go from I'll never to I'll always, you know, I'm never going to get past this to I'm going to be perfectly fine because it's totally unbelievable. You really can't see that, Mm. you know? So we start with ladders with kind of uh, bridge thoughts. And one of them is possible. It's possible that I'll feel better. And we practice that for a while until you can start to really feel that in your body, not just in your head, but in your body. And it's possible that I can feel better. And you start to kind of raise your vibration a little bit. And then, Mm. um, you know, I believe that it's possible. And then it's, I believe, you know what I mean? You're going up a belief scale. Because uh, your belief is really just a thought that you keep repeating to yourself. So if you keep doing that, repeating that same thought over and over again, eventually you're going to start to believe it. So if you can start repeating the steps and I love the fact that you've got I love that bridging thoughts that's yeah that's awesome that that's a really good way of doing it so that you you know you you, small steps small steps yeah small steps if you try to take too big of a leap your brain is just not going to buy into it and your ego is not going to let you do it either because your ego your human ego will actually sit there and go you know what I'm going to keep you here in grief because it's safe and we're not going to go all the way over there because like you know we jump off this cliff and who knows what's at the bottom? But if we have built a little bridge to get right. over there, then yeah. you know it'll exactly. let you do it bit at a time. Which is yeah, exactly. that's, that's a really good. I love the visual on that bridging thoughts. Yeah, it's, yeah, the bridge thoughts really, really important. And uh, you know, do just doing it step by step. So that's kind of the, the first chasm. step. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bridge the chasm. <laughs> I yeah, love that. Cool. Instead of taking a leap of faith, which is really hard for some people. Yes. Well, yeah, that is. And especially if people have this, you know, belief that their grief is the be all and end all. This is it. I can't move past this. Right. That's that's it. How am I going right. to get out of this? Or they've dug themselves a hole and they're sitting in the hole. How am right. I going to get out of that hole? You know, whereas mm-hmm. step by step you can help them. So what's the next the next step from there? Embracing the discomfort and feeling all the emotions. Ooh. Yeah, that's the ooh, right? We all, yeah. we, we, the, I can't say we all, because that's not true. Some people are very feeling people. They really feel before they, you know, they want to feel in their body more than they want to think um, or, or f- recognize the thoughts. They're going to recognize the vibration in the body first. Yep. But for many of us, we don't feel our feelings. You know, we get kind of programmed from a young age. We shouldn't feel this way. If you want a, something to cry for, I'll give you something to cry for. You know, that kind yeah, of a thing. Yeah. And we're not sure how to feel. Mm. But the thing is, the the belief and the thoughts are what, cr- this is what I teach, create the feelings. And your feelings are what drive your actions and get your results. So if you're if you're getting your belief under control, Now you need to be able to feel what you're feeling so that you can start taking the actions you want to take. It's difficult to take the actions you want to take, creating a new life, finding a purpose, finding a meaning from a feeling that just feels heavy and icky. Mm. And I think the other thing is, sorry, I was just going to say about what you're saying about thinking in the past. I think it's really important at this stage, wouldn't it, to be in the present moment all the time. Being in the present is here and now. Right. And that's the feeling, the feeling, you know, what am I feeling in my body? Where am I feeling it? Am I feeling it in my chest, in my neck, in my, my shoulders? Is it heavy? Is it light? Is it fast? Is it slow? Is it a vibration? Is it a a feeling? Does it have texture? Does it have color? And really describe it. When you're describing the emotion, you are in the moment. You're absolutely in the moment. So you're bringing it alive. You're bringing it up. You're, yeah, you're really tapping into it because when you tap into the emotion and emotions, as I teach them, are just energy in motion. When you tap into that, that emotion and you realize that fear and the anxiety and the, and the doubt and all these things that you're afraid of and you don't take action because you're afraid or you think something's bad is going to happen, you're resisting that feeling. What's causing you more stress is actually resisting the feeling. Whereas if you release and you describe what am I feeling, you're processing that emotion through your body and it will actually pass through your body within about a minute or two. Because you are, as you said, very present. 
you're describing what you're feeling and you will feel it move out of you. As you and once that. you recognize, once you recognize what it is, it's easier to move something away from you when you know what it is than mm -hmm. if you're, it's just a mass and right. you've got no idea where it is or what it is or what it looks like or, you know, let it you're go. You can't let something go if you don't know what it is already. Right. You're fearing the unknown. Yeah. And, you know, I'm afraid, so I'm just going to tighten right up. When the truth is, release it, let it go, describe it. So that's kind of the second piece. That's of a it. really, that's a really good way of doing it. Because every day we walk through a sea of energy and we walk mm -hmm. through a sea of positive and negative energy. And if we're sitting there holding onto a whole heap of negative energy, you know, and, and fear and, and all of that, we're attracting all that other negative energy to us, which is also making it more difficult to see, to feel, to think. Whereas mm -hmm. if you can actually be strong enough to let go of that and do it the way you described it, which is awesome. Um, mm -hmm. Once that's gone, you'll find that you're attracting more of the positive energy towards you. And right. that's going to help you, I guess, with the next step. So basically we want to, um, we, we want to tap into yourself being your own best mentor. Yeah. So imagining future you. So you you've got a belief, you've kind of started to change your thoughts. You've started to learn how to feel your emotions. Now you can start to visualize what you're looking for in the future. And it could be any number of things. It could be a tangible thing. You want to start a business. You want to make X amount of money. You want to start a foundation. You want to how whatever tangible thing you have. It could also be abstract. It could be just, I want to feel better. I want to be more accepting. Mm -hmm. And we need to find a way to measure that. Um, it can be done, but we I have to work with the client to find out how, what measurement works for them. How are we going to determine that we're reaching these results, right? So we need to really visualize and determine what that future you is going to look at like, look like so that you can then work with yourself, your future self, to help you continue to take steps. Because here's the thing, you can get the how from anybody. You can go on Google how do I start a new adventure? How do I start a new, you know, 501c or whatever it is. But if you don't become the who that needs to take those steps, you're still going to stay in that comfort zone. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It does. And I guess one of the biggest fears with, with grief is that if you step out of that comfort zone, you've um, lost that connection to the whatever it was you were grieving you know, whether it be the a divorce or the loss of a child or whatever it is, you're frightened to cut the cord. Yes. Oh, that. yes. We know that I was frightened to cut the cord. <laughs> we know that you and I. Mm. But once you realize, and I think you call into, I just learned about this concept called sufficiency. So there's abundance and there's gratitude, but then there's also sufficiency that what you have is enough. Yes. And when you allow enough to flow through you and out to the world, you just start calling this in. It's it's a little bit different than abundance. Um, mm -hmm. Read it in about a, in a book called The Soul of Money by Lynn Twist. Mm -hmm. But I actually brought this out to my Facebook group tonight. Uh, this idea of sufficiency, and even though my son only lived for twenty years, and I certainly feel like that wasn't enough. If I can tap into believing and and accepting that what I had with him was enough in the physical sense, and now he's trans, he's um. What's the word I'm looking for? He's helped me. Transition. Transition. Thank you. Transition. I just went right off my head. Transitioned to the spiritual. And now I have a spiritual relationship with him. I take that with me for the rest of my life. Yes, that make absolutely. Sense? Absolutely. Yeah. And the other thing too, is that you haven't lost a lot of people when they're grieving a lost, uh, so, you know, somebody who's died or passed transition, whatever you want to use the word. Um, because the reality is they haven't gone forever. And I guess that's the hard part about people who don't believe that there's the other side is that, um, you know, that must be really difficult to, to deal with because the person's gone. Well, they're not. They're, they're just on the other side. The same with feelings, the same with your emotions. Like if you're grieving the loss of a marriage or whatever, yes, you're grieving a loss, but it's not really gone. Like it's just, it's transitioned into something else. Exactly. So the whole thing has transitioned. And also the fact that um, you've been out there putting so much energy at this, by this stage into everything that you, 
I guess they'll be soon starting to get ready for some self-love. Yeah. Yeah. Self-love is very important. It's uh, and I think that comes from the self-trust and that when you're, when you are tapping into your future self and, and having your mentor, you know, your future self be your mentor, then you have your own back. It's building yeah. self-trust and the self-love just comes right along with it. You're getting more confident. You're trusting yourself. You're saying you're going to do things and you're actually doing them because you know that the worst thing you're going to feel is an emotion, which is only a vibration in your body. And if you're willing to feel any emotion, you can do anything and you can take it with you. You can do the thing, even though there might be a little bit of fear, you can still allow that to be there and Mm -hmm. have your own back, have your own trust, build that self-love. And constantly looking forward. Mm -hmm. Because from a spiritual perspective and energy's perspective, your higher self is never looking backwards. So your higher self is always looking out for you and wants the best for you, but always wants to move forward because you're always progressing and learning. And Everything you go through is a lesson. So doing all of this, and I love the fact that you teach people to look forward because it's conflicting with what who they are truly are, who their soul truly are is, and who their higher self truly is, to actually look backwards. It's yeah. not beneficial. Right. And it's really fascinating that, you know, you don't want to move forward because that's uncomfortable. But the truth is, you're already uncomfortable. Love it. Yeah. You know, you're already mm-hmm. uncomfortable. So which discomfort is worse? So uh, uh, where, where have we been so far? So we've got believing ahead of time. We've got um, feeling your emotions, being your mentor, having your back, and then evaluating. So really looking at what's going well, starting with the positive. What's going well in this transition? What's not going well? And then what will you do different? That's how you keep moving forward. And it's not from a judgmental place. It's from strictly an observer and an informational scenario where, you know, now that I'm doing all this work, what's going well for me? What are my wins? Let's have some celebrations. Ah, what's yes. not going well? What do I want to do differently? And it really, if you're not, a, if you're not measuring, you can't, you don't know if you're getting, you know, you don't know where you are if you're not measuring, right? You can't. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't even think of the word I'm trying to say. But anyway, you've got to keep measuring somehow you do because what you need to do is be celebrating those small achievements so as you you know as you actually are feeling a little bit better today celebrate that yeah and you know and and go with that and and until you get to that stage and you think well it's okay for me to celebrate i guess you need to have gone through those steps that you work through them with to get to that point where they can go you know i'm actually feeling a bit of positivity today and Woohoo! That's really good. And it's not bad. Right. It's not wrong. I know. Right. And I remember the first time that I laughed after my son died and I thought, oh my God, should I be laughing? How can I be laughing? And then you start beating yourself up for being human, for laughing, for having a good time. And oh my gosh, how can I? And you slowly transition through that. And it is very common for, you know, I see this all the time, you know, in my grief support group, you know, would you guys have, what you do for the week or what? Well, I spent some time with my daughter and we had lunch and, you know, that was really nice. Well, that's great. Let's celebrate that. Well, it's really not that big of a deal. It is that big of a deal. It really is. And our brain mm-hmm. wants to tell us it's not a big deal. Keep us small and safe. When at the end of the day, if you celebrated the brain's like, oh, look at dopamine hits. I want to do that again. Yes. Let's do that again. <laughs> Let's do that celebration thing again. That's why celebrating yes. is so important, even the little things. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's small achievements. Easy. Yeah. Small achievements, the bridge Big thoughts. Ones. Yeah. So important. So important. That's awesome. I love the way you've set that out. I love the steps that you've actually put it in place. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it works really well. I've actually done this week a, a blog post on positivity. And nice. there's lots of little things um, about being positive and staying positive and people just even celebrating little, th- little things, little achievements, little steps, small steps. And it's, it works really well to do that. 
you know, because it, it will help. As you said, the dopamine kind of kicks in and and we are meant to be happy people. And, yes, things will happen in our lives. But you're right, it's programming in a lot of the way. And the guilt that we feel, we carry that as a burden. Mm -hmm. And part of that reason we feel so guilty is because we're programmed. Yeah, exactly. I actually had somebody say to me the reason we feel the guilt is because we love. But I'm not so sure that it actually works mm -hmm. that way. Well, I can say that I felt obviously a lot of guilt for myself. And then I heard this really great um definition of guilt which guilt is if, if you're do if you did something intentionally and when I sat with that I said well I never did anything intentionally to hurt my son so I was really able to just let guilt go at that point and I realized that what was underlying it was shame because guilt is I did something bad and shame is I am bad I am a bad person so mm -hmm. that was my work to do. And I was hide it was hiding underneath guilt. Once I was able to get rid of the shame, the guilt, I was able to then deal with the shame and really start working on that was probably the biggest part of the work that I did was dealing with that shame. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm, that's a long yeah. journey. It is a long journey. It really is. And it's not something that you get over. Uh, you know, it's something you get over. It's something you get through. Um, and depending on your relationship with the person, if it's a person you lost or, or the divorce or whatever, depending on your relationship, it's going to be different and everybody grieves differently. And for me, when I'm talking about grief, the most important thing I want to bring to the table is normalizing grief and knowing mm -hmm. that when you're in grief, everything's on the table. As long as you don't feel like you want to hurt yourself or hurt someone else, everything else is on the table. And it's going to be, uh, you know, sometimes one step forward and three steps back. And that's completely normal. And I think we as humans, many of the questions that we ask, the underlying question really is, am I normal? That's what I was going to say. There's no real definition of normal, is there? I mean, yeah. normally is what's normal for you. I use this analogy of babies walking. When a baby starts to learn to walk, when they fall, the first thing I do is they look at their caregiver for a reaction. You know, if the caregiver says, oh, you're okay, you're fine. The baby's like, okay, well, that hurt a little bit, but I guess this is normal. I'll get up and try it again. Yep. If the caregiver's, oh, my God, are you okay? And the baby's like, oh, this isn't normal. I shouldn't be doing this. I hurt, oh, you know, crying. Yeah. Yep. And then if you think a child in a room by itself and that child falls and has no one to look to, to, am, is this normal? They have to kind of figure it out for themselves. And in society, we think, oh, what an independent child. Isn't that wonderful? We're so happy. Every, you know, independence is strong. But here's what's really going through the mind of that hyper-independent child. Am I normal? Am I, am I doing this right? I can't be doing this right. This can't be right. Oh, my God, this is wrong. How do I know if this is wrong? Am I losing my mind? That's what's going through the mind of the hyper-independent person right here. Yeah. yeah. That's where interdependence and having that having someone normalize grief, I say there's, you know, two, two word sentences in the English lang language that are super important, super uh, powerful, me too. And I am. Oh, yes. And when someone can say me too, I've had that experience too. And you're normal. It's like this whew, breath of fresh air. And I, I do that a lot with the people that I talk to normalizing their experience, just normalizing it. So powerful. Mm. And helping them with the I am. Yes, the yeah, I, am, I am connects them with who they are. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Taking it from the negatives to the positives. Love it. Love yeah. It. All right, gorgeous. Well, how can people get in contact with you if they want to do some work with you? Yeah, I have a, I have a website. It's called uh, From Grieving to Living. So it's www.fromgrievingtoliving.com. It's kind of okay. a, an homage to my journey. Okay. And I'm also on Facebook. I have yep. um, a Facebook page, which is uh, also from grieving to living, I think is how you find it right now. It's, it's titled Patty Schmuck, Co uh, Patty Schmuck Coaching. And I'm also on Facebook, just Patty Schmuck. You can find okay. me there. All right, gorgeous. Well, thank you for sharing what you do, because what you do is actually part of a spiritual journey as well. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's all part of the healing that has mm -hmm. to go on for you to move forward in this life. Yes. The way it is. Yes. 
So, and you can't move forward, you can't heal without somebody like you helping at times. Well, my tagline is connection, meaning, and healing. Connection leads to meaning, meaning leads to healing. That's perfect. We're all sentient beings. We all need connection. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. We, th we thrive on the connection. Absolutely. So connection, whether it only be to one or two other people or whether it be to hundreds of other people, depending on, you know, what you need, what your needs are, who you are, but it's still all about connection, connection to humans and connection to the other side. Once you start balancing that, you know, like to your soul and yourself is who you are, you start to find out who the true you is. Yes, yes, and that connection to yourself builds yes. the self-confidence and the self-trust and the self-love. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you for chatting. And for um, not a problem, Patty. And um, I'm sure we'll do this again in the not-too-distant future. Excellent. Excellent. Right. I look forward to it. Okay, thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye.